Hi, this is Dr. Mark Sell from the YouTube channel Therapy for the Heart, and this is the 73rd talk uh, in our series of many, many, many talks uh, that began around 2012, I believe. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about the repetition compulsion and um, just my camera here. Thank you. Aha. Aha. That reminds me of what I'm going to talk about. Aha. So the repetition compulsion, but the, there's a story that Freud uh, wrote about, and uh, he was observing, he was an observer, so he's observing a child uh, at play. This, this child was about a year and a half old, and he saw the child throwing objects out of the room or in the corner or under his bed. He repeatedly did it did this um, activity. So one time he, he had a, uh, an object that was, uh, had a string attached to it and his bed was curtained. So he would throw the object over the bed and, uh, and then he would retrieve it. So when we throw it over the bed, he would exclaim, ooh. I think that was also an expression of a word, um, a fort meaning gone, but then he would retrieve it. He would pull it back up over the edge of the bed, and when it came back, he would go, da. So this was repeated over and over again. And Freud had a few thoughts about it, that he was um, um, reenacting, he used that word at the time, but reenacting a um, traumatic experience of his mother being away um, and then retrieving her. So there was a lot of pleasure in actually pulling back that, pulling up that, uh, that uh, toy over the bed. So there was pleasure and unpleasure. So he was developing a sense of mastering uh, uh, this um, uh, anxiety that he had about his mother not being around uh, by recreating it and redoing it. So it's very interesting. Yeah, so there was a mixture of a pleasure and unpleasurable uh, experience with this, and much more pleasure in retrieving the object. Uh, so this little boy had an awful, also a, a full-length mirror in his room. So he would also have a game, a game where he would look into the mirror and then crouch down where he couldn't see himself, and then he would jump up and go, ah! <laughs> Ah, so so it's quite an quite an observing powers that uh, Dr. Freud had, and I think he was um, he's really a magnificent, curious investigator and inventor of many many things that apply to the uh, human psyche. In terms of the repetition compulsion that we see, that's very uh, familiar in, in, in people, and you, you've known it, and you've seen it with your friends and yourself, possibly, is uh, is returning, returning to or recreating an unpleasant experience uh, in a relationship that you that you have over and over and over again. So. Maybe you've established a, a pattern in your life, which um, you might be a woman who's finding all, all the time, for some reason, you find men who are emotionally unavailable. Or a man could find uh, a woman over and over again who uh, is not interested in uh, sex with him or seems to be very disinterested anyway, seems to be. And, maybe be, tend to be critical or coarse with him. So why is that? Now, one would think that we'd be, we'd be um, making sure that we find a pleasurable experience and, and a relationship that would have a positive outcome for us, but it's not so. In these many cases it isn't. So and the reason being is that there's an attempt to master a trauma um, that and then you have some control over the outcome. So 
had many traumas in our life, and, and also in terms of how we began today, uh, of separation, of uh, insecure attachments, uh, things are not working out well, um, and invariably they don't work out that ver very well in childhood, not all the time, but we have uh, many, many experiences here, the, the YouTube uh, videos and, and podcasts and in life of how people uh, end up uh, in misery in relationships and not not know, knowing why. They just feel like it's something that happens to them rather than that they are uh, re reenacting something rather than remembering it. Why wouldn't you want to remember it? Because remembering uh, a very painful, for instance, a very painful desertion uh, that a child had repeatedly over and over and over again. Uh, parents being, caregivers being uh, not available or disinterested, uh, abusive. Uh, these, these are traumas and uh, they're very hard to get over, especially if you don't have any, anyone there to help and to sense that there's uh, something to be done. Like um, uh, Cecil's mother, uh, she, she went into therapy because I think this bears repetition because it's such an amazing example that she went into therapy because she thought that the son, her son had a problem with uh, engaging with her. And it wasn't the son, it was the mother because she, was heading, she had a transference to her mother that she was painting on Cecil and experiencing his impassive and disinterested, what she thought was a uh, disinterested look. Uh, was the mother, uh, again, um, experiencing Cecil as the mother. Well, Cecil was just trying to avert her gaze, gaze aversion, which, child do, which children do because they're too, too stimulated by uh, repetitive attempts at trying to get them to respond. They need to look away, but she experienced it as a rejection. But she saved his life because if she didn't go into therapy with him at that time, he probably would have blamed himself for the lack of engagement because the mother was blaming him, not blaming him, but that's, she, she held, she felt it was his responsibility. So, so, so many ways people can, out in the audience, think about their relationships with each other, particularly with their relationships with their children and, uh, and how their children are needing to be uh, heard, listened to and not deserted and not, uh, not, not that parents are intentionally deserting children or harming them, but they, they, are, they are responding to unconscious forces within them that they're not aware of. And sometimes only when they get into therapy that they become aware of these things. And, and thank goodness for that, because then you don't have to repeat. Uh, then the, your child uh, uh, doesn't have to repeat experiences that, that you have repeated over and over again. You'll give them a different chance, a different opportunity in life not to have the same experiences. And uh, when children, couples see me and then they talk about their independently or in, individually and then they find out that they have certain things in, in, inside them that are very reminiscent of their parents, uh, they'd be able to have control over it rather than repeat it. You know? and so, we really like to have mastery over our, our lives. We don't want to feel like we're helplessly controlled by things. So in this way, by repetition compulsion, you can manage the mood uh, with a less threatening, controlled experience. It's like, well, I'm gonna get it right this time. And the problem is that you can't rewrite history. By reenacting re it, you can, can have some control over the affects uh, in this situation, with this um, unavailable relationship, at least you can have some control over it, you're even making it happen, uh, but you can't really uh, rewrite the fact of what happened when you were younger and you were uh, tra traumatized and you were helpless in the face of it. Now you, now you have control, but really you're not, you're not gonna be able to make that event of your life like maybe a mother or a father was not that interested. Just, they just weren't, they didn't have the capacity. Uh, and you have to, in other words, you mourn, mourn that loss. It's, it's a terrible loss and no wonder people don't want to think about it. How, you know, and then children blame themselves because of the, um, um, 
the impact on them. They they think, well, it must have been my fault. I didn't do something right. I didn't do my work work homework uh, correctly. Uh, uh, it must have been something that I did to create this yelling and screaming that my parents uh, carried out in front of me. It wasn't them. It must have been me. Spilled the milk. So the repetition compulsion has many has many um, advantages uh, for people because they avoid pain, unbearable pain. I mean, if someone ever, if some of you in the audience perhaps have gone through this grief and recognizing how they lost the parent's affection and interest and never can regain that, uh, very, very hard. So, so one repeats it like the child throwing the toy out of sight and then recovering it. So it's basically a defense mechanism in life, um, a repetition compulsion to defend against the terrible affects that we at once at time had no um, capacity to really um, bear. Very hard to bear depression and anxiety when, when we were very young. And I think that those listening, if you could discover the patterns in your relationship um, and make a note of it, um, oh, well, yes, my friend said, oh, you're picking the same guy or girl over and over again. How can you do that? Well, maybe something will um, catch in your mind and say, yeah, I am doing that. And I uh, wonder what that's all about. And then you get into therapy, and you see something, somebody like myself or someone else to see, to see if you can um, lock down the, the pattern and discover more about it uh, so it doesn't control you. you you're going to be in control of it. The problem is that if you, if you don't get into therapy, many of these things that, are un that go on in you are unconscious. They're not available to your conscious um, understanding of what the motive is, you know, to avoid pain. You just end up feeling a victim and kind of helpless in the face of a repetition compulsion. Because so many things are unconscious, because you don't want to know them, you don't want to remember them, because there's an avoidance principle, you know, that, you know, the pleasure pain principle is like trying to want to avoid the uh, pain and to gain the most pleasure of moments in your life. However, it doesn't work, as we've talked here about it in therapy. So, there's a knocking upstairs. We have construction down on the uh, block, so I'm going to end right now because I think it might be interfering with the rest of this uh, uh, talk. It's like a boom, 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 boom. They're building a whole building down at the end here. So. But with that, I'm going to sign sign out and sign off. And it's nice to be here again. It's Dr. Mark Sell with the YouTube channel Therapy for the Heart. And uh, please uh, make a comment if you'd like to, and like like the channel, like the talk, or unlike it. And uh, and I'd be looking forward to your comments. So thanks again. I'm going to sign off right now. Bye bye.